Hey everyone, welcome back. Thanks for your time. President Trump is once again the sitting president of the United States and the pace of executive orders and actions at the very top is fast and furious to start. Some of those directly affected NASA, but the space agency was largely silent during Trump's first week back in office. In this video, I'll talk about that and how we're in another wait and see period with NASA and Artemis. For the ongoing presidential transition, we're waiting for the dust to settle with no responses yet from NASA and very little to say about ongoing work. For Artemis, we're kind of waiting for the bubble to burst. Trump and Elon Musk are continuing to signal an end to the status quo, but they are not showing their hand yet, so we're sitting here waiting. President Trump was sworn in for his second term on Monday, January 20th, and on the first day back in office, he designated Janet Petro to be the acting NASA administrator. It was unusual for NASA and took many of us outside observers by surprise, but presidents can and do make these acting designations with other vacant positions. Let's take a quick dive down that rabbit hole to explain why this was unusual. The Office of NASA Administrator has an order of succession, which was codified in January 2009 by an executive order of President George W. Bush in the last days of his second term. As Section 1 of that order says, quote, The following officials of the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, in the order listed, shall act as and perform the functions and duties of the Office of the Administrator of NASA, during any period in which both the Administrator and Deputy Administrator of NASA have died, resigned, or otherwise become unable to perform the functions and duties of the Office of Administrator, until such time as the Administrator or Deputy Administrator is able to perform the functions and duties of that office." Unquote. And then the ordered list follows, headed by the Associate Administrator. So if the President had not done this, Associate Administrator Jim Free would have become acting administrator until nominee Jared Isaacman is confirmed by the Senate in the future. Since both NASA Administrator Bill Nelson and Deputy Administrator Pam Melroy left office with the Biden administration at noon on January 20th. This was the expectation, since it had occurred that way since 2009, and with no advance notification, NASA's websites were initially updated to reflect that. Ms. Petra was in the line of succession since she was Kennedy Space Center Director, but she would have been behind Mr. Free and Johnson Space Center Director Vanessa Weish, with Bill Nelson's Chief of Staff also leaving office. NASA has updated the pages on its website to reflect the President's order, but has otherwise not answered follow-up questions about how Ms. Petro will operate as Acting Administrator. She was the Director of the Kennedy Space Center, but NASA headquarters is in Washington, D.C. It's not clear whether she will be based in Florida or D.C., but she was one of the NASA representatives at the Day of Remembrance Ceremony on January 23rd at Arlington National Cemetery in the Washington area. Given that designating an acting NASA administrator is unorthodox, there is also the question of why this was done. The new presidential and NASA administrations have not provided any comment about the choice, but there was some informed speculation online from Eric Berger. Mr. Free made remarks in late October before the election at the Von Braun Symposium in Huntsville about sticking with current plans for human spaceflight beyond Earth orbit. Bypassing Mr. Free can also be interpreted as a sign that Trump and Elon Musk do not want to stick with the current plan and change is coming to Artemis. Setting aside those dropped hints, we're still waiting to see what changes they will make unilaterally and what changes they will propose to Congress. One of Ms. Petro's first actions as acting administrator was carrying out the Trump administration directive from the acting head of the Office of Personnel Management to all heads and acting heads of U.S. government departments and agencies to terminate diversity, equity, inclusion, and accessibility programs. Mr. Isaacman's nomination to take over from Ms. Petro as NASA Administrator was also formally submitted to the Senate on January 20th, and that was then referred to the Senate Commerce, Science, and Transportation Committee as expected. Next, we'll wait to hear about a schedule for a confirmation hearing. Also related to NASA, on January 20th, the Department of Government Efficiency was formally established. 
Elon Musk is in charge of that oversight slash advisory body, which is already under legal challenge, but this immediate action to designate an acting NASA administrator is more reason to be watching closely to see what cuts Doge proposes to NASA and Artemis and timing of actions related to those cuts. NASA did not respond to inquiries about the designation of Ms. Petro or how the acting administrator will operate, but they also did not respond to any other inquiries about ongoing work with Artemis. A news release on Thursday, January 23rd announced studies for lunar surface logistics that may not happen until well into the next decade. However, while NASA is releasing information about the future, they are silent right now about their future. Talking only about the future highlights the silence about the here and now, when there is so much uncertainty and doubt about the present. NASA did not respond to communications about current or near-term status throughout the week. There were no responses to communications with Johnson Space Center in Texas, Kennedy Space Center in Florida, or Marshall Space Flight Center in Alabama, where most of the program offices for Artemis are located. While we wait for things to settle down, possibly, the other news and notes this week is more notes than news. Following the seventh launch of a Starship prototype on January 16th, postscripts from the flight test are still forthcoming. The test was terminated incomplete, with the Super Heavy booster completing its flight cycle, but the ship failing to complete its orbit insertion burn. The Federal Aviation Administration reported the day after the flight that there were no reports of public injuries, but they were still trying to confirm reports of property damage. Places like the Turks and Caicos were apparently in the ground tract of the debris field made when the ship destroyed itself. It may be that we don't hear much more about this last test flight and the timing of the next one until after the SpaceX technical investigation is complete and the FAA signs off on an updated launch license. A short update on Artemis II stacking operations was provided on Friday, January 24th. That noted that the right-hand forward center segment was the sixth one lifted into place on Wednesday, January 22nd. It also noted that Integrated Operations was planning to go back to the left-hand booster and stack the left-hand center center segment, which had originally been planned to be the fifth segment lifted, but would now be the seventh. An indirect update on the status of the Gateway Habitation and Logistics Outpost module was provided by the European Space Agency. In a feature published on January 15th, ESA noted that a media event would be held on February 20th in Turin, Italy, at the Talus Alenia Space Facility, where the HALO module structure was assembled and tested. That says that shipment of the module following the static load and proof pressure testing should be occurring somewhere following that event. Northrop Grumman is the prime contractor for the HALO module, and the completed structure will be transported to a facility in the Phoenix, Arizona metro area in Gilbert. That is where integration or outfitting of the structure will take place. Northrop Grumman will install all the wiring, fluid tubing, and equipment inside to evolve the passive structure into an active working spacecraft. Northrop Grumman is also the prime contractor for putting the HALO module together with the power and propulsion element that is being built by Maxar. That will happen after both elements are shipped to the Cape Canaveral area in Florida near their launch site for that final integration and pre-launch testing. Interestingly, without any fanfare or any notification at all, the target launch date for those initial elements, also called the Gateway Co-Manifested Vehicle or CMV, that target launch date was updated on NASA's Gateway landing page from no earlier than 2025 to no earlier than 2027. A new working launch target date was one of the big mysteries of 2024, since it was under review for the entire year. A new target launch date was never updated, and even here on the landing page, it's not clear what this date represents, whether it is that new working date or not. The formal joint confidence level date for launch readiness was baselined over a year ago as December 2027. It's not clear whether this new date is narrowed down more than the calendar year or not. Some reference footage of umbilical arm testing in October was published last week and this week by NASA. 
The exploration upper stage umbilical is being tested in the launch equipment test facility at Kennedy Space Center for eventual installation on Mobile Launcher 2. At the LED-F, the connections on both of the umbilical plates will be tested, including propellant loading, purge, vent, electrical, and data connections, along with the release function of the plates and the retract function of the umbilical arm itself. Similar testing is being conducted at the LED for the other umbilical and mechanical connections between the mobile launcher, SLS, Orion, and secondary payloads that will fly co-manifested between Orion and EUS. Thanks as always for watching. Click on the like button if you found this video informative. I have a few notes and there's a few more takeaways from events at the end of last year. I'll try to work on those soon, and in the meantime, we'll see if there's more to report in the next Weekend News Roundup.